robotics. So you'll going to see a lot of evolution discussion today in our conversation about uh, autonomous remote services and where that impacts our daily lives. So the session, our goals today are, I'm going to go through of how security is adapting to improving technology. We're going to talk about autonomous remote services and the emerging technologies and the robotic impact on um, our daily lives. So I'm gonna start a little bit with discussing the industry and how it's changed in the last 10 years. So traditionally, we've got man guarding, right? Uh, human beings that have specific duties to protect people and assets um, and the guard tracking devices. So um, I, I'm going to make an assumption that you folks have some of this technology or available to where uh, guards can now track their uh, their patrols. Uh, the massive consolidation of growth from acquisition and additional supplement services like integration. And when I talk about physical security, I break it out into three sectors. It's the physical that is the humans, right? The guards, the integration, which is the, is part of the technology of, um, you know, access control, visitor management, artificial intelligence, um, metal detectors, you know, turnstiles, all those types of technology is considered under the integration. And then you got the autonomous remote services that take a little bit of physical security integration and create its own sort of piece in the middle. So if you, if you look at, you know, um, call it physical security in the news, you've all heard uh, probably by now the Allied Universal, which is the largest security firm uh, in the world. Uh, they're based out of Southern California. Uh, they're just acquired G4S, which is a global company, which I'm a assuming you're familiar with. Um, and then second in line to that is Securitas. So you've got some major acquisitions coming at the top level. In the United States alone, there's 8,000 security guard companies, 8,000. And we have 1.4 million licensed security guards. So in the United States, depending on what level you are in experience and what state you're in, you have to have what they call is, is a guard license or um, a guard card. So there's training that has to go into that prior to folks standing on post because um, you got to be vetted by the state and in some cases, uh, federal government. Uh, the reason I mention that is because the attrition rate, meaning how many people turn over and over and over in that industry is over 400%. And so you take the 1.4 licensed security guards and turn that over 400% of the time, there's just not enough people to protect the assets of, of companies. So you have to augment that with technology. That's why traditionally, if, if you wanna break it down to a granular position is if a security guard opened a door for somebody, that's access control. They're seeing somebody, they're opening a door for somebody. That now on the integration side can be done through prox cards or it can be done through credentials or biometrics. So you've taken some of that duty out of the hands of those guards and you autonomize that. And so when we talk about robotics towards the middle of the end of this conversation is now a lot of those duties could be done autonomously to where you don't need any human interaction. So as I mentioned, you know, over 6,000 guarding firms, uh, top 20 are controlling the 90% of the market. There's no real solution for the industry challenges. And those challenges are the recruiting and the training, you know, uh, we see, at least in, in the United States or North America primarily, you know, this peaks and valleys where people want security, people need security, 
but they don't budget for security. And so that becomes a problem. And then of course you get in theory, um, not a great product, which is a low uh, waged person who's actually a security guard guarding vital assets. So we, we evolve into the physical security space, right? There's been little innovation in Lux in reducing the excitement of, of security, right? It's, it's, I don't wanna say it's not, it's not glamorous, it's not Hollywood, um, but as we're locked into legacy infrastructures and cost structures. So in my business today, um, we are helping changing the paradigm of the way people are thinking as it relates to security. But a large percentage of the time, I'd say 90% of the time, it's all about hours per week and guards on post. And when you ask why, it's because that's how we've always done it. And so people aren't necessarily susceptible to change. And that's not a bad thing. It's just, hey, I don't, I, my personal opinion is the physical security industry on the guarding side hasn't evolved as fast as technology and other sectors of the world, right? Manufacturing, you know, on the auto side has technology, you know, you, you constantly have, you know, Lexa, Siri, and Google uh, technology that can help you do searches and help you find things. So the industry hasn't really caught up with that yet. And that's because of a, a few things I mentioned, consolidation and technology price reductions have, have really strained the top line growth. And so, you know, technology sounds expensive, but it's not expensive. And so as we talk about, continue to talk about man guarding is the challenges relating to put low wage employees in dull, mundane, dangerous positions. So, you know, you guys have probably watched the news. We got a new president yesterday. Um, I'm not talking any politics, but, you know, 20,000 of our federal uh, guards were at the inauguration because they didn't want any nefarious acts, any domestic or foreign terrorist acts. It was a big, big deal and nothing happened right? Knock on wood, right? But that's 20,000 people standing around when technology, drones, robotics, artificial intelligence, which all play into these people standing around, could actually allow it to be less people standing around, right? And I don't mean standing around that they're not doing anything, but we know the guard business not being glamorous is could be dangerous, but 99% of the time, it's just dull and boring. Nothing happens. And we hope that, that nothing happens. Um, low customer um, and employee satisfaction. I mentioned it's low wages. Customers have high expectations, uh, really zero, uh, zero taste for field-related failures, whether it's no-shows, missed breaches, um, employee theft, things like that, that really put um, the product, which is the security industry, um, back behind the times. So, you know, of course, minimum wage benefits, proposition of guards. But as we kind of full circle to technology and robotics, we're talking about physical security cameras, access control, blue light phones, emergency phones, high infrastructure cost um, and project implementation. And what I mean by that is just to put a camera in, you got to run cable and power and potentially do some trenching and you have to get support from your IT services. And so believe it or not, from the man guarding the physical security industry, um, there's been a, a huge gap in adaptation of the innovation. So slow to adapt, you know, uh, SaaS models, solutions, artificial intelligence that leave the market underserved. Commoditized solutions in a race to the bottom to gain market share. So people are trying to invent or buy market share just to have um, more of a landscape for their business, but they're not looking at the quality of what their product is. So when technology can be, can be 
technology can make our lives so much more efficient, convenient for not just a lot of money, but the jury has spoken. We'll take the technology, uh, but we want to use the technology to better us. Like, again, you know, if I just think about restaurants, so restaurants in the United States have gone to uh, ordering your food through a device on the table, right? Or going to a fast food restaurant like McDonald's, you can order your food um, on a tablet. Uh, you could still deal with a human being, but less human beings, less labor cost, higher product, better product. So as we kind of just look at the landscape, I want to look at this, and this is U.S.-based numbers, but you look at I mentioned the man guarding business on the left and the integration business on the right is about 50 billion US dollars. It's huge. This autonomous security solutions, autonomous remote services that's in the middle is where robotics sits. So we're pulling some human activity from the left, meaning man guarding, and we're pulling technology, artificial intelligence, um, analytics from the system integrators, and we're creating our own industry. And we're gonna talk more and more about uh, the autonomous security solutions and in industry as we go through this. Um, this is a little bit of a rough slide, but it's important that we talk about this because, you know, after this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause and talk more about my company for a second because it relates to this slide. But when you look at, the innovators, to the early adapters, to the early majority, all the way to the laggers. This is the problem that we're having in the industry right now is really adaptation, right? And anybody you ask, and I've taken a poll on LinkedIn, but anyone you ask who thinks they're an early adapter, they're really an early majority. And if they think they're an early majority, they're really a late majority. So I say everyone's to the right, of where they really, everyone is actually to the right of where they really think they are. So if only 2.5% of the market is innovators, forward thinking, hey, let's do something different. That's not a big number when you get 34% of the, the industry really not um, adapting to technology. And this is all about technology, right? So it kind of paints the picture of, to where technology is. Now, let's talk for a second about autonomous remote services as it relates to robotics. So um, as you introduced me, you know, I'm the vice president of, of a robotics company called Robotic Assistant Devices. We have an acronym called RAD, R-A-D, because we think we're so rad. That's really kind of a cool thing, right? So the, the, the business model behind our artificial intelligence is to augment human behavior. So augment specific post-order duties that guards do, like access control, visitor management, um, keeping people or vehicles out of specific um, areas, right? Um, alerting authorities when there's a breach of restricted areas, um, looking for preemptive strikes, so to speak, you know, uh, bad guys returning. So we create bolos beyond the lookout for specific people. And so the guard companies in general really are early majority and some are early adapters to our technology because as I mentioned a few minutes ago, the challenges of recruiting, hiring, retaining, dependability of, of the guards and the low sort of wages that, that they're given, they really need a solution for their customers. And our solution, not that this is a sales call, but our solution is about 85% ROI to a human guard. So, you know, if you're paying a human guard you know, 10, 20, $30 an hour, depending on experience. Um, our devices are one, two and $3 an hour. So it's huge ROI to the end user. Um, and there's zero maintenance, right? When we, we, we jokingly in the industry talk about cameras, i.e. robotics, don't 
sleep in, don't, don't uh, uh, not show up. They don't fall asleep on the job. They don't forget their uniforms. They uh, don't steal from you. They don't get beat up. They, you know, all those dependability things are really something to where what robots are taking over. And when I say robots, we've got fixed robotics in my company and we have autonomous robotics that kind of do their, their mobile tours. And, you know, we're really changing the paradigm of the industry. And I'm not just saying my company, but uh, the whole uh, emerging technology sector is really changing the paradigm of security and where they're at. So when you talk about autonomous remote services, as the name suggests, autonomously and remotely, it supports the full spectrum of technologies needed to provide a robust security facilities concierge service. So why did I throw concierge in there? Is because through robotics and through our technology, it's not only a security device, it's also a operational concierge device. We, our devices perform specific duties that receptionists perform, lobby ambassadors perform, such as badging, such as visitor management, such as uh, greeting people, right? Uh, our, our devices are, are unbiased, um, I'll say unbiased devices, meaning when it's enforcing policies, it's not, it's not yelling at someone, it's not challenging someone, it doesn't need to have de-escalation uh, practices, Etc. So, you know, there's really a, a huge, um, as I keep saying, paradigm shift from people to technology, right? And when we start talking about the industry in flux, you know, uh, through ASIS, as, as you probably know, Security Magazine, magazine is one of the, uh, and Security Management Magazine, when you look at the 2008 guarding report, it's really based upon conversations with the high ranking executives that are representing the guard companies, technology manufacturers such as ours and, and other security professionals. And what we look at when we're looking at the flux of the industry is really are we focused on the customer solution through true integration? Guarding is never gonna go away. Security guards are never gonna go away but they are doing duties that aren't really security related. I, I could tell you in my tenure of being uh, in the man guarding business, um, I, I wouldn't surprise you or me of some of the duties that our guards were doing. Now, those duties could be, hey, putting newspapers on all the office doors, right? Or getting the mail or checking in vehicles or doing, those are just good concierge, good natured things to do because the guards are bored. Remember, 99% of the time, nothing happens. But those aren't guard duties. If those duties can be done through autonomous remote services, right? You see the theme here, ARS. It's really the evolution of reducing of the complexity of the solution that customers currently have. We are focused and the industry is focused on, you know, the true customer satisfaction. Can we lower cost and enhance security? And the short answer is yes. And by doing that, you're disrupting the status quo, right? I mean, when you talk about the industry being in flux, you know, it, it, it's really uh, hard to go back to, if I go back to this slide, and we're going to refer to this slide a lot in this conversation is really how do we get people to innovators and early adapters? You know, is somebody willing to go to the next level for their organization to secure, right? We know military does it. We know government does it. But we, we also know that people like the status quo. So if we look at the robotics industry, right? So we're I've kind of set the tone for you know, how we're getting to this point in the conversation is, you know, we've identified robotics as one of the six innovation accelerators. Really robotics 
in autonomous remote services is the fourth industrial revolution for us. It's evolved from humans now to autonomous devices. And I know we're talking about security today, but you got to look at robotics as a whole, right? And look at the changing ways that work is performed. You know, forecasted global spending on robotics over time um, through 2019, it's grown at over 17%. It's going to be, you know, I showed those slides of $50 billion. Right now, the, the industry is, is, is poised together to be 135 billion and 20% of that be robotics AE technology. So that's taking a industry right now that's probably um, less than a billion dollars to $20 billion over the course of five years. Um, so, I mean, it's kind of unbelievable rates, you know, when you really kind of think about the growth model. The broad-based growth in robotics adaptation is being driven by the increased labor cost. We talked about that, you know, uh, how, how much does it cost you to recruit somebody, train them and retain them? The shortage of skilled labor humans, you know, as I mentioned, 1.4 million in the US with a 400% attrition rate. Uh, and the increasing, increasing emphasis on repeatable quality in conjunction with reduction of price. So, you know, we, we're looking at, you know, in, in my company, in my industry, we look at clients that want to reduce their spend, but traditionally as you reduce your spend, you're going to have a gap in your coverage and that's not good security. So we become that gap in coverage. We become that force multiplier, but you still have that guard. So if you've got three guards per shift, maybe you go down to two guards and you add some technology, you add some robotics that could cover those shifts. They're a lot less and they become that force multiplier. I could tell you, I could show you, I mean, I had a pretty busy day here on Friday where, uh, you know, now that it's the new year, we, we got customers saying, I, I want technology. I've got, I've got clients that spend 20 to 30 million US dollars a year on on man guarding. And I said, I could take that down by 20 to 30%. If I take it down by 20%, that's $6 million in savings. That's a huge savings in a lot of experiences. You know, you replace one guard with one device, it's 95% savings and over in the US, it's over $200,000 savings. So you just use that for that multiplier of simple math to come up with what your cost savings is. But when you look at the service of the robotic industry at the 23.9 billion by two years from now at a 15% growth rate, the, the service of the robotics is gonna be the largest market um, since 2015, which was really when the explosion came on the market. Professional services as it relates to robotics is currently the most widely developed deployed application as, as it relates to market value. So I talked about automation as it relates to manufacturing, as it relates to logistics, as it relates to applications. You know, we kind of always like to go back and say, you know, Siri and, and Alexa and some of these other uh, types of devices that we're using in the States, you know, we've named them names on purpose because they have identities. They We talk to them, they talk back to us. In my business, uh, we do the same thing. Our devices, and I'll, I can pull up a, a slide at the end and kind of go through this, but our devices are named Scott, Rosa, Wally, Ava, and Romeo. And all of those uh, names mean something to us, but we try to personalize and humanize our robots, right? Because you know, it's kind of like naming your dog and naming your cat or naming your fish. So when you really peel back uh, the largest share of growth uh, through the robotics market is gonna come over the next two years in North America. And as we see that adaptation, we'll, we'll see more and more. So I want to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop sharing for a second and pull up another, um, 
another um, slide deck, but um, because I'm, I'm still a ways to go. How much time do I have, by the way? You still have uh, about uh, 15 minutes. Okay, great, great, great. Because I, I love to talk, so. Um, okay. Let me just. Please do so, no, no problem. Up. Okay. Let's see here, where is that? And, I, and I'm happy to take any questions uh, anyone, so, anyone has. So you want to have the question uh, uh, during your presentation or after uh, the presentation? Yeah, ends? yeah, yeah. We could we could take questions in between. I'm I'm happy to answer okay. those as I look for this no. this next slide deck. So, okay, teman-teman, uh, kalau ada yang mau bertanya, is there any question from the audience? Please do so. Ada yang mau bertanya mungkin tentang presentasi barusan mengenai bagaimana terjadi apa uh, perpindahan ataupun juga sekarang masuk uh, masuk ke era robotik di mana main guarding tidak bisa digantikan tapi akan uh, tetap akan tetap ada tapi di mana peran robot dalam hal menghemat biaya dan juga dalam hal yang lainnya dalam hal ini misalnya saja uh, mengenai apa mengenai uh, keamanan dari uh, manusia uh, melindungi nyawa manusia dalam hal ini sigat itu sendiri bisa digunakan uh, robotik kalau ada pertanyaan silakan aja uh, okay. yeah. So I'm ready to go to, to go back if 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 there aren't any questions or there Ada are. Uh, Andreas, wait, uh, yeah. uh, Mr. Andreas. Yeah, there's one question. Yeah. Please introduce yourself, please. Yeah, uh, Jordan. Uh, this is Andreas uh, from uh, Helen. Uh, I would like to. Uh, ask you about uh, the some things that you mentioned in your presentation about the robotic uh, business uh, is a drone uh, business considered part of your uh, business uh, the, the number that you uh, show there like uh, showing CAGR of close to 18 uh, percent uh, per annum uh, that, that is very good uh, but is is it including uh, drone business or uh, not including drone business? That's my so uh, so. Question. Yeah, great question. That number does include drones. We have uh, a beta tested drone in our company right now. We don't specialize in drones, but you know, drones and robotics are are really combined in that emerging technology sector. You know, you look at emerging technologies that develop practical applications. So obviously drones and robotics fall on that. Um, you know, it's it's the background of the non-existent obscurity of what robotics and drones are doing today versus humans. So yeah, it's the part of the problem in the drone piece is a very small piece to that. In the United States, the, the government put stringent uh, uh, policies in place of of drones, you know, how high they can go. You have to have federal licenses, you have to have line of sight, and you have to have it being able to con be controlled. Most security drones don't do that because you can't have line of sight and you need it to go higher. And if you get if you go get the license, it's it's equivalent to a pilot's license, right? So the cost of that is too astronomical. So we've got some stuff in, in our R&D right now that's drone related because we do want to send out, well, for, for purposes of this call, kites, right? We want to send out tethered devices that could go and gather information and bring that information back. So yeah, that the drones is part of that, but drones, in my opinion, at least in the United States till uh, the government eases up on those um, criterias. Um, it's going to be slow moving. With robotics, there's there's no true criteria. Uh, we kind of invent our own through the artificial intelligence and, and all those things. And it goes kind of back to, you know, the emerging technology characteristics by, by design um, are, are really what is driving it. Right. It's it's every day there's a new ask. Our technology, this is a long answer, but our technology and our our um, features 
are based on what our customers tell us they want it to do, right? So I jokingly say, hey, if you wanted to mow the lawn or make a cup of coffee, it doesn't do that today. But if we wanted to do that, we've got to be able to program it. So that's, I think that's the big, the big, uh, the big difference there. So hopefully that, that helped you a little bit with the, with the drone question. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you. So let me, let me, cause I, I want to be respectful uh, for time. I want to okay. yeah, go ahead. Another, Is there another question from uh, Mr. Peter. Uh, no. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, please uh, continue, uh, George. Okay, so I'm gonna show you a little bit more of where our robotics, this is my company, um, falls in the category of uh, autonomous remote services. And it really embodies its own proprietary technology and services within a single fully function silo. So what you see here on, uh, you know, I kind of went through this on the last slide, but when you we see our devices here, these are all self-contained with its own Wi-Fi and right? You don't have any infrastructure. You know, it's really streamlined and effective for different uses. These get mounted on a wall. This is seven foot tall. It's a standalone. This is six foot nine thousand pounds with wheels on it. So all these have different applications, but all the applications can be handled remotely. That's where that service comes in, whether it's remote monitoring, whether it's uh, video verification, whether it's opening a door remotely, whether it's greeting someone re uh, remotely saying, hi, how are you today? How can I help you? The person or device greeting you can be anywhere in the world to perform that function. And through facial recognition and through, again, the artificial intelligence, doors could open, people could call for help, people could notify their hosts of, of different, uh, uh, that they're there to visit. So, you know, kind of break it down and, and, and we've got some use cases and I, I could refer you to our website. I mean, it's clearly I'm not selling you anything, but we've got case studies um, in various industries from the automotive to transit authorities, to retail, to corporate. Jordan, to uh, Jordan, sorry, Jordan, your voice is interrupted, I think. Are you okay? The, the, the connection? Yeah, can you, I can, yeah. yeah can, okay, then, it, it, thank you. Okay. Um, you know, corporate lobbies, vehicle access, distribution. These are all places, healthcare environments, schools, uh, campuses, all these things are where we're seeing robotics today. And so here's an example of one of our devices. This is our Rosa, right? Remember we call by name. This is the eye in the sky. You install this on a pole. It's got artificial intelligence. It's looking for people and vehicles in restricted areas. And what it's doing through, through machine learning is called a, a neural network. It's different than motion. Our neural network is telling this device, the trends and behaviors of people and vehicles that come in contact with this. And what happens is, is we can really articulate between a golf ball and a giraffe, right? Because both of those would set off a motion in, in, in true motion, but a machine learning device is going to remember that trend. And so what happens through our robotics in, in the industry is this a device like this is mapping out or geofencing a restricted area. And I, I walk in or a car comes in and it sets off an alert. And that first contact alert is an audio. So all these have two-way audio built in and some of the devices have two-way video and audio. And you'll hear something like, you've entered a restricted area, you're being recorded, please leave. 90% statistically people will leave if they hear a voice and hear and think they're being recorded. So all of that is done autonomously. If they don't leave, then the next escalation goes to this re autonomous remote services to a command center anywhere in the world that is linked up to us to be able to come on and say, hey, you in the blue shirt, you're trespassing, the police are on their way. So. These things make noise, these things light up. I tell clients that it's very 
unlikely that people wouldn't know it's a security device. Um, you know, we have other devices. This is our software and our background, but we have those other devices that are, let me go back to, to this one is, this helps with autonomous verified access. So in trucking and logistic and manufacturer, pharmaceutical uh, campuses, people or vehicle can come up to this device and put in their credentials and a gate can open. But it's got the security cameras on the side that's validating people based on a, a set of workflow. Same with this Wally device. It gets installed on a wall, it goes in a lobby. It tells the, the, the person I'm coming to visit that I'm here to see them. But this also, these, these three also have a concierge effect on, on this because you've got interactive tablets that will tell weather, might tell uh, the news, might tell different, different things that could help somebody uh, without having to ask questions. Instead of asking for directions to a guard, you could go up to these devices and it will tell you the directions, right? So I'll kind of go back to my favorite slide here as we sort of close it out and ask for more questions is you really look at from our perspective, the autonomous remote services links up to the cloud and then comes back to situation awareness, meaning desktops or, or phones or tablets for security to be able to manage these devices, right? So it's, truly an autonomous um, autonomous remote services, but it could also be a good force multiplier for uh, security personnel on site. You know, while the industry revenues will continue to, to decline in the guarding business, profitability can be maintained through autonomous remote services. You know, I've been, I've been in that space for about 12 years um, combined with uh, the man guarding space and the margins are higher, the service is higher for, the, for folks like us and the end product for the customer is a better enhanced safety and security device where you're not relying on human beings to take first contact and action. So, you know, there's clearly a tipping point. You know, if you, if you search the web, You'll find statistics that indicate a few players that dominate the guarding industry. We talked about Allied Universal, G4S, Securitas. These companies are huge. But if you were in the industry, do you know that these companies, the, the numbers could be higher and the margins could be higher based on integrating technology with that? So again, it goes back to lead, lead or be led by those devices. And as Companies like mine are selling um, autonomous remote services. I talked about it's the fourth industrial revolution era. Buying groups increase to reduce risk and facilitate ultimately uh, a better product. So if I tell you or you tell your client, I can reduce risk and reduce costs at the same time, that's where people are adapting to. Uh, to this. And, there, and, there's, and there's many functions, right? I talked about, you know, I'm going to kind of spew out real quick of the, vis of the autonomous remote services, could be video verification, could be visitor management, could be just monitoring, right? It could be, uh, I'm just looking at my notes, could be access control, could be the artificial intelligence, could be the voice down, could be health monitoring. You know, we've got devices that take temperature because of COVID. We got devices that will remind you to put on your face mask through the analytics because it can detect that. There's a lot of different things that, at least in the States, you know, we, we've seen guard companies being taking temperature of people, right? Because of COVID, right? But you got to wear PPEs. You've got to, uh, be six feet from people. So they're not accurate readings. Plus you're now exposing humans to humans. With autonomous temperature scanning, you don't need to have all those, um, all that workflow or all that uh, human labor. You know, I'll kind of close it out 
a little bit with, you know, autonomous remote services um, enabling health screening kiosks will soon be recognized as offerings of the greatest return on investment because we've got to get people back to work and people back to normalcy. And if the temperature reading is part of that, we're gonna to have to do that. And there's no way that somebody can, can sustain it with human labor. There's just no way. I mean, I know companies that have someone 24 seven, multiple people spending hundreds of thousand dollars a month that are unbudgeted because they need to take temperature. So when you really look at you know, the, the final thought, right? You know, who are those that are unwilling to aggressively think outside the box? You go back to that early adaption curve to educate themselves on technology and the resources and devise better ways to serve their customers. These organizations like RAD and some of the other ones use their forward thinking, their engineering to offer what will soon be um, you know, by early 2022, 2023, you'll be seeing more and more robotics out there. If, if anyone here on this phone attends or will attend future ISCs, uh, uh, future uh, ASIS uh, ex uh, exchange uh, um, expos that we have in the States or even in your own country, you're gonna see more and more robotics. You're seeing drones, you're seeing these autonomous services. So the airtight alignment between security and services and autonomous remote services can be delivered in a way that will become the new normal. So that's my presentation today. Um, again, I, I'm happy to answer any questions, but I, you know, as we reviewed the, the bullet points of the industry, where robotics fits in that and where autonomous remote services can help augment specific duties, um, the sky's the limit. So again, I want to thank everybody for inviting me and um, it's been an honor and I'm happy to answer any questions again. Thank you, Jordan. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, is there any pro question from the audience uh, about the um, uh, Jordan presentation or uh, about the technology in general in security? Please do so. If Apakah ada pertanyaan dari teman-teman untuk uh, Jordan mengenai uh, presentasi yang disampaikan atau juga mengenai teknologi di uh, security secara umum? Silakan. Uh, ya, boleh nanya lagi Pak. Silakan Pak Andreas. Uh, ya, Jordan, I have uh, two questions actually. Uh, the first one uh, related to the business itself. Uh, considering for in, in country like Indonesia the Man guarding cost is still uh, relatively low, right? Probably around one to three dollar per hour per guard. Uh, and 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 your product also offers uh, the same price level. So, uh, what would be interact interesting or attractive business case uh, for Indonesian uh, companies then to 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 be attracted to use your your products? That my that is my my first uh, question, and related to the uh, technology uh, that is used by your products, uh, is the processing done inside your device or done uh, in the cloud? Uh, great questions. Think? Actually, two really good questions, um, and and the um, I'll answer the last one first, and the uh, first one last is the the artificial intelligence is through the device but gets stored in the cloud. So the device itself is doing the heavy lifting. We store the video and the alerts in the cloud. So it's really kind of a, a cool uh, piece to that. Now going back to the man guarding cost is if you just look at sort of apples to apples you know i kind of mentioned a dollar an hour in in the states versus 20 30 whatever dollars for a guard it, it, it's the same uh, comparison to your three or four dollar an hour guards in, in indonesia where we would be substantially less i couldn't kind of do the 
the calculation ratio, but you know, if your $3 an hour guard in Indonesia is our $20 an hour guard in the States, then robotics would be pennies, you know, 25 mm -hmm. cents or whatever. It'd be, um, you, you know, just kind of whatever the conversion is because, um, you know, you kind of have to look at, at some point, and I don't know this, right? So I forgive me, where does, where does three or $4 an hour a fall in your minimum wage range? Is it the bottom, the middle, the top? Uh, depending on the region, actually. So yeah, so, I think it just is relevant to, to that. I mean, I mean, you look at technology in general that I mentioned is, you know, the, the, the uh, financial impact or the immediate impact might be higher than the security guard, but the overall ROI is gonna be lower over time because you're, you might be subscribing or buying the device for whatever amount of money, but the ROI over time is, is gonna be a lot more effective, but less expensive than a human labor guard and more reliable. So I hope that answered that question. That's a great question though. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Andreas. Uh, ada pertanyaan dari teman-teman yang lain kalau dalam bahasa Indonesia silakan saja nanti, nanti saya coba uh, bantu untuk terjemahkan. Uh, Jordan, so uh, your company is based in US, right? Yeah, we're based. Yeah. Uh, we're 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 based in uh, actually Irvine, California, Irvine, and okay. we have production in Canada as well. Okay, so it's only cover uh, North American markets, or uh, you also have considering to have like a, a expansion to other countries in the world, or already did? We do. We we we, we um, it's it's more of a case by case basis right now, but we are we do have our first partner in Romania, and we've got some stuff going in Germany and and uh, England uh, in the next uh, ninety days. So it, what, we're, what we had really looked for as we bring that technology to other countries is, for lack of a better example, a dealer or a partner to sponsor it, meaning we wouldn't really want to ship one or two devices to an end user. We don't want to manage that. We want a partner to manage that because obviously we're, we're too far away. So in Romania, mm -hmm. Germany, and England, we have a third-party partner that uh, we'll ship the devices to, and then they'll manage that relationship with the customer. Uh, so your your product uh, is uh, also uh, compatible with. I mean, let's say uh, let's say the uh, the client has existing uh, electrical electronic uh, product for security, for example, like CCTV or um, uh, access control and such and such. So it can integrate it, or we have to replace, uh, or they need to replace all in uh, with your products or. Uh, any other uh, way to do it? So, so we do integrate, so you don't have to replace your current technology. We mm -hmm. do recommend in most cases because we're cloud-based and we sit on our own system is that we're standalone. So mm -hmm. it becomes a force multiplication. So traditional CCTV, as everyone knows, you stare at the camera and you hope to catch someone or vehicle coming in or a person coming in and then you follow your standard operating procedures and you react. Hmm. What's different from us is you no longer have to stare at any cameras. You're notified when those acts happen real time. Hmm. So, you know, you'll get a, an email or a text or a blurb up on a screen that will show a guy or gal in a restricted area that hmm. normally you probably would be looking for. And that's, wasted labor hours just focusing on monitors we yes. want those security professionals to be doing other security duties because remember i mentioned 99 percent of the time nothing happens right so mm -hmm. why spend labor on staring at cctv so it can be integrated it can be standalone it links up to the cloud and again it gives you situation awareness in the palm of your hand okay uh, besides you, uh, United States of America, uh, uh, in global in, in global uh, area, 
which other countries that you find it's like uh, they're quite active in developing the uh, this kind of a uh, uh, robotic industry for security besides us so you know we look at um you know the uk you know mm -hmm. china japan some of those uh, some of the other countries uh, australia yeah. so they they have some forward thinking they have lots of technology i mean you know, I've read the stories of UK having millions and millions of cameras and, you know, China being the same thing. And they're doing more than just security. They're doing situational awareness. Maybe it's big brother, but it's really helping uh, run the country, right? You know, and they're doing that uh, remotely, right? I mean, you know, in, in mm. some of the countries I just mentioned, versus the United mm -hmm. States is my understanding is law enforcement doesn't always carry guns. Law yeah, enforcement right, yeah. carries guns in the United States. Um, yeah. And, you know, yeah. like I went to Japan last year, not last year, the year before. Um, and I was surprised that law enforcement have guns because I'm used to that. But the mm. crime rate is, is, is less and they have other solutions that are helping reduce crime. That's not, already adapted the United States. So, you know, the United States or North America is a little bit behind in that technology. I mean, mm -hmm. um, statistics show that there's, um, there's about 32 million cameras, both residential and commercial in the United States. And you and I, if you're in the United States, appear on camera 70 times a day somewhere. Traffic mm -hmm. light, a bank, supermarket, drive-by. You don't think about that, but in the other countries I mentioned, you appear on camera hundreds of times a day, and that's why they're able to prevent crime from happening, right? So there's a crime prevention tool. Um, they're always, and they're also able to solve crimes uh, pretty quickly because they have access to more information than potentially we do in the States, mm -hmm. because we just don't have that as many cameras. We don't have as much technology. We will get there, I think, personally in the next 10 years, but mm -hmm. people push back a lot. I don't want anyone in my business. I don't want big brother looking at me. I, it's my privacy. And then you get the different yeah. privacy acts and things. Um, to me, if, if it's used properly, it, it's not a privacy act violation. It's a, it's a safety enhancement. Okay. Good. Okay. Ada pertanyaan, any, any question from, from the audience? Dari teman-teman ada pertanyaan, silakan. Pak Hendra, ada pertanyaan lagi dari yang lain? Oke, okay, since there's no uh, question now, uh, I have another question about the uh, the specific pro your product because you mentioned about AVA, you know, about Wally. What about Romeo? Romeo? Yeah. So it's it's like a, a patrol is, a patrol robot or yeah. what? So it's uh, Romeo is an autonomous mobile unit. So what it does is it will patrol perimeters, open spaces, uneven pavement will go through dirt, water, snow, uh, mud, sand. It will go up 20% uh, percent inclines. And what it's designed to do is really replace that guard that's in the golf cart or the truck that's patrolling rural areas, you know, places, big campuses that, hey, when a guard is at one place, he can only be at one place. So what this does through its artificial intelligence is picking up perimeter patrols and, they're, you know, it's creating geofences and, you know, it's taking the technology from the, the Rosa, Ava, Scott, and uh, Wally that you saw that are fixed post and it's dumped them into a uh, remote device. And it's not remote controlled, it's a remote device. So we program it to do a tour, right? You, you, you drop it in like a, a Google map and you, you pinpoint where you want it to go and you walk away and it just goes there, right? You can recall it if you want, there's certain things, but it does not have a human remote control function to it because that sort of defeats the purpose of autonomous, right? Because uh, you'd still have to pay that person. So uh, love Romeo. Romeo's in in a lot of large logistic and, and higher education campuses where you got large 
square miles or large acreage that you're trying to cover. And when you compare it to the guard cost in the United States, it's still a 65% savings. Is it uh, uh, using the same technology like a self-drive car or? Yeah, that's, that's different... funny you, you mentioned that because um, it's exactly like a self-driving car. And so my boss, who's the visionary behind Romeo, uh, talks about traditionally, if you want to go build a robot, you kind of go to the virtual robot bin and get all the robot parts and you build a robot. Well, what we did with Romeo is we didn't go to the robot part. We went to the self-driving, you know, virtual parts department and we created our self-driving. We've used some Google analytics. We've used, we use LiDAR um, and some things like that because we want it to be self-driving. I mean, you're probably all familiar with Tesla and some of these other true self-driving machines. We wanted Romeo to do that because um, if it was a robot with wheels, it wouldn't be as effective as it, as it is today. Okay. So it's a same principle, right? So with the self-driving yeah. guy, yeah? Yes. Well, any, uh, any question? From, from the audience. Okay, Jordan, in 1980s, I, if, uh, uh, I don't know whether you know, the, there's, there was a, there's a movie, uh, Robocop. So is, is, yes. it, is it happening now? Do you think so? Is there any like a Robo, Robocop in the near future? Not to replace, but um, to uh, complement the, 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 the man guard. I, um, honestly, no. I mean, that's Hollywood and I, and I live in yeah. Hollywood, right? California. <laughs> You know, that get, we get compared to RoboCop a lot because, mm. because of that. You know, I, I think if you, it, it's, you're not going to have robots enforcing law like soldier robots, mm -hmm. but you already have robots through us and our competitors and even the military, you know, with unmanned drones and flying machines that are enforcing laws mm. and compliances. So, you know, you know, I remember those movies vividly where, you know, the, they took a human piece and they made it into a robot right. and it was a self-driving car. I don't think mm -hmm. we're close to that for patrol purposes. I think mm -hmm. what we'll see more of before that is drones and more autonomous robots, mm -hmm. um, but not in like vehicles like police cars and things like that. I, okay. I, don't, think, I don't think we're there yet because <clears throat> of certain guidelines and, and I think... Uh, sort of principles too of, of Robocop. Okay. A good question. We, get, <laughs> we do get that a lot. Yeah, because, because uh, I believe that uh, it's not, I mean that, yeah, you mentioned just now that your uh, some refer your company as a Robocop company things, right? Because it's like a uh, like a 40 years ago. I mean, that like more, no, 30 years ago uh, movies, yeah. right? So it's become a reality right now because there's also like a robot, robot uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, in the from from Honda, if I'm not mistaken, Asimov, it's something like that. So this a robot is more like a service robot, right? Not not for security, yes. but the, yes. the the principle is like a, make a robot as a part of the uh, service industry. In this case, maybe related to um, a security industry. So, but still, uh, I mean that it's 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 just Hollywood, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think I, I think we're just we're not there. You know, I there was a, a show a year ago that it was kind of interesting because it took a modern um, stab at RoboCop and it was helping. And, and this is really the premise. It was helping augment law enforcement when they would arrive on a, a scene that was virtually unknown, meaning, mm. you know, having a drone come out of the police and seeing inside if there's any hostages or any people with weapons. I think we're mm -hmm. gonna be there uh, faster yeah. than we think. I mean, the nice thing about our devices is when it eventually calls law enforcement to a scene, law enforcement can now look through our devices remotely for a safe, a, a sort of a safe deployment. Hey, path of travel, people with guns, yeah. what do they look like, description. Cops are afraid definitely probably worldwide but i see this every day in the states to to show up on a scene with the unknown right you know is it, yeah. is it worth to show up and a, and a guy shoot? but what if you showed up and go god i i know he's wearing a red shirt and he's got a gun and he's hiding over there 
that makes it mm. easier for for them to, to do their tactics so. okay okay that's uh yeah yeah a lot of uh new things that uh, we learned from from your presentation today so if there is no any other question i would like to thank you uh, for jordan for your time for your effort to make this presentation happening to, for our chapter uh, hopefully we can uh, work together again in the future with a different uh, topic or related topics with a more advanced technology possibly so once again we would like to thank you uh, jordan for your uh, availability for us and then uh, uh, hope you are doing a great there uh, and then also keep yourself healthy yeah so this uh, this condition is not the um, a good time for everyone in the in this world because of the uh, COVID-19 but I believe the industry will rebound after this uh, vaccine things uh, doing their their job right yeah I agree and, and, and mm. thank you for inviting me if uh, you want to share my contact information with any of your uh, people and you got questions LinkedIn email right. it's always great you know I do okay. speak on Insider training uh, as far as it relates to uh, businesses and physical security. Um, if you're ever in a dire need of a topic, shoot me a note. I got folks, I got list of folks that could talk about different topics for okay, give you guys so much practices. So, okay. Um, so thank you guys. Be thank, healthy, thank you, be Jordan. Well. Yeah. And we'll talk soon. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. See you then. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye. Terima kasih semua teman-teman. Sampai ketemu lagi di pertemuan kita berikut di bulan depan. Nanti saya akan uh, informasikan di mana di uh, melalui WhatsApp group untuk teman-teman yang belum bergabung dengan WhatsApp group. Silakan uh, kontak di saya di 0812 8571 911. Untuk uh, nanti saya akan masukkan dalam uh, uh, WA group, uh, WhatsApp group uh, Asis, uh, atau bisa juga melalui uh, ini, melalui apa, melalui Instagram ataupun juga Twitter. Kita akan informasikan mengenai kegiatan kami. Oke, okay. terima kasih sekali lagi uh, dan selamat siang, selamat uh, ya, selamat siang, terima kasih.